He hear our prayer. Who are you and why are you here? I am I am a broken sinner. I was born with a sinful heart. I was born deserving condemnation, like the rest of mankind. I was baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, to free me from hell's grasp, to unchain my soul. In Christ I am a saint, and for this I am forever grateful. But too often I resort back to my roots, my sinful roots. I am here because I need God's grace daily in my life. I am here to be restored, to be refreshed, renewed. I am here because it is not just my original sin that is the problem, but I struggle with ongoing sins. I do not take the time needed to spend with God in my daily walk. I am busy by many things, and too often put God on the back burner. I am here because I have let Satan give to me again. My thoughts are not always God-pleasing. My words too often offend and do not build up others. My actions are self-serving. I am I need to hear that because of the suffering and death of Jesus on Calvary's cross, my sins are paid for. I need to be reminded that God has planted faith in my heart that has connected me to the sufficient sacrifice of Jesus. I am here to be reminded that I am indeed forgiven, even marked for life by God's seal on my heart. I need to be changed. I need strength to persevere, to live daily in the joy that comes from remembering that I am unchanged. Glorious news is that as we have come in faith, and as we have confessed in faith, we can be assured beyond doubt of our sins, that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The response of reading for the day comes to us from John chapter 12, a portion of the Gospel. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. Then Mary took a pound of very expensive oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? But Jesus said, Let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. The next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. The of palm trees and to meet him and The next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast when they heard he came to Jerusalem took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it as it is written. Fear not, Father Zion, behold your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's pole. His disciples could understand the things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, 
Then they remembered that these things were written about him, and that they had done these things to him. For this reason, the people also met him, because they heard that he had done this sign.
today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Here ends the reading.
kids come up here for a few moments? And if you have one of these, bring it along. Hey, Mike, but he's still there. It's good to see all of you today. I bet you're wondering why you have a big, long piece of grass in your hand. It's kind of goofy, isn't it? You come into church and somebody gives you a weed or something. What's going on? Well, then we walked in from all the way down the hall. And we got to wave these weeds. They're not weeds, actually. They're leaves, basically, from a tree. And we, we did this because when Jesus was on the earth, he came into this city where he was going to be arrested and he was going to die for my sins and for your sins. And when he came into town, all the people that loved him, they grabbed branches off the trees like this, although they were bigger, they were more like this one right here. And they waved these, and they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. Can you say Hosanna? Hosanna. The big word, how about it? Can you say, yay, Jesus? Yay, Jesus. Can you try that? Okay, can you say yay Jesus? Can you say yay Jesus? Yay Jesus? Yay Jesus? <laughs> yay, That's okay. Jesus. Yay Jesus. So when I count to three, I want you all to say yay Jesus two times. Ready? One, two, three. Yay Jesus. Yay Jesus. So that's what they were doing as Jesus rode into town on a donkey. They were shouting, Yay, Jesus! We love you, Jesus. You are our King. We know you are God. Yay, Jesus. And then he died to pay for my sins and your sins so we can go to heaven. So these are a reminder for us that those people celebrated, that they said, Yay, Jesus. Yay, Jesus. You can go back to your seats. We'll talk more about yay, Jesus. I wonder if the people seated can say, yay, Jesus. On the count of three, take this and say, yay, Jesus. Ready? One, two, three. Yay, Jesus. Two more times. Yay, Jesus. Yay, Jesus. Not bad. Not bad. Whoops, just to move that. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, from our Lord, from our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I don't have sermon slides for you today, so you're going to have to pay attention. <laughs> so I'm going to go home now. James says, Come, you who say today or tomorrow we will do such and go to such a city and spend a year and buy and sell and make a profit. But you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Your life's a vapor. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this and do that. So far, that's the text. Planning. How many of you remember when you had a planner that was not on your phone? You had a calendar, a sort of book type calendar, and you used that for all kinds of things. How many of you still do it that way? How many of you have it on your phone now? A bunch of us, yes. How many do both? Yes. Planning. But I wonder, have you ever put something on there and said, well, I think I'm going to put that in pencil. What does that mean? Maybe. Write it in pencil, that means, oh, I can erase that if I, I might have to. It might not go just that way. Something else might come along. Who knows? Hmm. Planning. 
It says in Proverbs chapter 16, verses 1 and 3, The preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Commit your ways to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. What he's saying there is, hey, don't think you've got it all figured out. Put it in the Lord's hands, and, and maybe it'll go just the way you were intending it to go, but maybe it won't. But make your plans with diligence and with prayer. Put good thought into it. Give it over to the Lord. Also in Proverbs 19, verse 21, there are many plans in a person's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel is that which will stand. I have seen church meetings where they begin with 10 minutes of prayer and devotion before the meeting. God's. I've seen church meetings where they have so much to do, they get right down to business and don't have time for prayer, for scripture, or anything. Just got to get this done. Martin Luther said a long time ago, I begin each day with an hour of prayer and study. But when I'm extra busy, What do you think he said then? I spend two hours when I have more on my plate than I usually do. I double my time with God in prayer and study. Backwards. We would like to say, well, you know, I just ain't got time for that. I'm way too busy to talk to God about all this kind of stuff. Remember that reading read a little while ago in Ecclesiastes, that great section? A time for this, and a time for that, and a time for everything else. Great piece of scripture. It could have gone on for several pages with all kinds of things, time for, time for, time for, time for. But they didn't have time for that. But one thing that I want to mention out of that, he has made everything beautiful in its time. God's plan. God's purpose. God's time. Jesus is riding into the city. He spends the day ahead of time with Mary and Martha and Lazarus. The guy that he had raised from the grave after he was in the grave how many days? Four days in the grave. Can you imagine four days dead in the grave? And Jesus gets to town and he stands outside the tomb and he says, Lazarus, come on. First of all, he's dead. We like to talk to dead people because it makes us feel good, but, but he's been dead for four days. And there's going to be, as his sister said, hey, there's going to be a smell. Don't open the grave and surely don't go in there. And wait a minute, you called him out, he's not going to hear that, he's dead. What's wrong with you? But Jesus called him out, and Lazarus came out. Because Jesus called him from the grave. Well, it's that same sister of Lazarus, Mary that we heard talk about on, on this event here, that while well, Jesus is in their home on that day before we don't call Palm Sunday, and she 
takes this very expensive jar of perfume, perfume oil, spikenard from the valerian plant. Good smell, but very, very expensive. It was used for anointing for those who were important because we can't afford that. Could take a day, or sorry, a year's salary to pay for a jar like she used on Jesus' feet. But Jesus said, hey, she has saved this for now because she is getting me ready for my burial. Wait a minute, I thought you're coming down to take over the joint. Because he's anointing you now to get you ready for your burial. I don't think that's going to work with our plans. Well, it might not work with your plans, but it worked with God's plan because that was God's plan that Jesus would come to die to pay for his sins. He's talking to Pilate of Jesus. And through the course of the conversation, Jesus says to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not about the here and now. My kingdom is about something else. My kingdom is an eternal kingdom. And he has come to get things ready to bring people to his eternal kingdom. That is why he is here. That is why he lives among men and dies for men. And that's why, among other things, that Paul wrote, he wrote in Romans chapter 8, this is verse 18. For I consider that sufferings of our present time are not worth comparing to the glory that's going to be revealed in us. No matter how much stuff we might go through, he's trying to help the people understand, even to this day, trying to help us understand that it's not about the here and the now. It's about what is next. Planning. I have in the past done, I'll do it sometime in this next year, done funeral workshops where I'll bring in a financial planner, I'll bring in somebody from a funeral home and myself and we'll spend probably a Saturday morning, an hour each, uh, called looking ahead with confidence. Looking ahead with confidence to your death. You say, well, that's kind of an awkward title. Charge headlong to death. It's not just saying, no, charge headlong. and not just saying, well, you better embrace death. It's coming. It's not saying jump off a bridge. It's saying, no, you can look ahead to your death with confidence. Because all of this life is nothing in comparison to eternity with God and His perfect paradise. And he gives us that sure, that certain hope as we look forward. Peter writes, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ to an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled, does not fade away, preserved in heaven for you. Who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last times. He's saying you've got a future, you've got a hope. And so all the plans that we make, they're fine. But put it all in God's hands. And keep it all in perspective. In the church now, I've been here about four months, 
said we're working on trying to do some planning to work ahead as to how do we adjust and come out of this pandemic adjusted world with masks or not, with hugs or not, with getting close or not, and all of that. And so we make plans. And we put it in God's hands for prayer. But we don't sit back and say, okay, God, do your thing, I'll watch. We put it in God's hands and say, God, how can you use me? And we all say that. How, God, can you use me? And your plans for your church, for your people, for my life, today and tomorrow and the days ahead. All of these tomorrows. It's a time for all these other things. But it is all about Jesus. At the end of the service, after the benediction, we are going to do things differently today. We are going to, after the benediction, we're going to, at that point, have any announcements. And I'm going to try again to show you that video that didn't work last week. And then, we'll get into the final hymn then, but at that same time, we will have two elders come up. And you won't leave by just heading out the back. We want you all to come forward if you would like. And they'll be masked, of course. And they'll have hand sanitized. And if you would like to receive, we'll be using a Q-tip, anointing with the oil of spikenard, the same kind of oil that was used on Jesus' feet in the text, that expensive oil that, that lingers and reminds us of God's fragrant love for us. And you will be marked for life. Remember those words, I am marked for life. Can you say that? I am marked for life. Again, I am marked for life. One more time. I am marked for life. Final verse, Romans chapter 15, 13, it says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Indeed, may you abound in hope. May you overflow with hope. May you be assured. May you be certain that just as your chains just as your chains were broken by God's Holy Spirit, by faith in your heart, as Christ broke those chains, so you are marked for life. So you are given eternity in God's perfect paradise. Tomorrow. Tomorrows. They are all God's. And in faith, they are also yours. Amen. And may the peace, the peace that comes from knowing that, may that peace Overwhelm you day by day with joy and rejoicing. Amen. And let's speak words that summarize how we understand our God. These words are nice and creative. As together we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made. Being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. And was crucified also for us under conscious Pilate he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no one. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped. Who is by the gods. And I believe in one holy Christian and I saw the church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And if you
you are able, we rise with prayers. And if you want to make sure you have your uh, inserts, we're going to read off the first names of those people at a certain point in the prayers. Gracious God, God of all time, before the beginning, you are God. After the end of your creation, you are God. And because you stepped into time in Jesus, we get to go with you to eternity. We praise you for this glorious victory that is ours. We praise you that indeed we are in Christ marked for life. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. we ask your blessings, Heavenly Father, upon your church around the world, that you would help us to best prepare for these earthly tomorrows, to plan the best way to bring forward the joy, the hope, the peace, the assurance that comes from knowing and trusting Jesus Christ as Lord, as God, as Savior. The world has changed, but your word is changed. Let us lean on that which is changeless to approach the ever-changing days of life. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. Many have struggled in the past year with plans that have been destroyed. Brothers, plans just adjusted. And so, Lord, for those who are struggling, we pray you would lift them up. Encourage them. Grant them hope and grant them blessings for the days ahead. Guide them in the right direction to move forward in the way that will bless them as you would see fit. Let them remember along the journey that you are the God of all creation. All things are better than in your hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring these names to you. These names of people in our congregation, just these first names, you know them, you know their hearts, you know their situations. And so, Lord, hear now these names. Lillian, David, Linda, Kelly, Scott, Brad, Linda, Bethany, Micah, Caden, Alexandria, Keith, Christina, Cole, Kelly, Blake, Dawn, Chris, Dakota, Isabel, Lily, Cora, Sherry, Courtney, Caleb, Dwayne, Marianne, Noel, Stephen, Ruth, and David. Lord, we give them to you for your grace, for your peace, for your refreshing, for your providence. And Lord, for the niece of our Jim Moat who was hospitalized yesterday with some pretty severe seizure type activity. We ask your healing, your full strength, and as they seem to have some answers, we pray, Lord, that it is the right answer in the right direction. Guide them along the journey. And for Linda Sears as well, Lord, as she continues to need your strength and healing, we thank you that she is with us today, but we pray for, for strength down the road ahead. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. and prepare us for the feast of Jesus Christ. Amen. We prepare now for the feast. Let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth.
kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Paul said, I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. Take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you. He said, do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is that new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And we are seated to follow the ushers in their guidance.
Let me rise for prayer. Lord, we have been gathered. We have heard your word. We have processed in singing Hosanna. We contemplate your eternal kingdom, our home. Send us now, having been refreshed, as we go into this heavy but glorious week ahead. Lord, in your mercy. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Look upon you with favor and grant to you his peace and his joy. Amen. Please be seated. As I mentioned last week, the week before, we're working with love packages, delivering them with this material so they can distribute to those who don't have a lot to read that points them to Christ. There are boxes out there, a little tub to gather. There were six boxes delivered this last week, so this will praise God for that, but more to come. I want to remind you again that when we uh, dismiss, we will have you come forward to receive the mark with a little spike nard on your forehead or on your wrist if you wish, if you want on your wrist. I want to mention too that Thursday, Monday, Thursday, gathered here at 7 o'clock for Holy Communion to rejoice in the giving of that feast, the Passover celebration changed forever in Christ. Good Friday, two different services, one at noon and one at 7 o'clock. We encourage you to plan to attend all three of those if you're able. And any of them, of course, are good, and they will hopefully get them all online at some point as well. And Easter Sunday, a glorious celebration service with a lot of music, scripture, celebration, rejoicing. And uh, so that's coming up in the next seven days. There is no meal event on Easter Sunday, so you're going to have to take care of that on your own. Any further announcements from anybody scattered out there? Yes, Joe. We have been handing out chain links, broken cut links, uh, to remind you that our chains are broken. If you didn't get one yet, make sure you get one on the way out. It's a reminder that Christ broke your chains and has given you that hope of eternal life. And so now, if the elders would come forward to prepare for the anointing, as we also then continue with our closing hymn. Right on, right on. 